Good evening. I'm finally reviewing the very popular Sip of Sunshine, which is a Lawson's Finest Liquid brand, but this is brewed by Two Roads Brewing in Connecticut. It's not brewed in Vermont. It's different from their Double Sunshine, which is the double IPA made, actually brewed in Vermont at Lawson's Finest Liquids. This is 8% alcohol. I think it's basically the same idea as the Sip of Sunshine or the Double Sunshine IPA. It's 8% alcohol. This one was canned two weeks ago. It was from a, a drop of this beer that came through Massachusetts. And hopefully it will start happening more often. I know this beer is primarily citra forward, but they don't really give you a lot of info on exactly the malts and other hops used. And it doesn't really matter. Let's just let's just drink this thing. I don't know if the Lawson's version is hazy or anything, this one, because this is not super hazy. You can see that it's you can see through it pretty well. It's not even close to as hazy as like Petty Topper usually is. Um, and I'm smelling it already. It's a, one, probably the best beer that Two Roads does. Two Roads does a lot of really interesting, great contract brews for Evil Twin and others. But this is the one that everyone is going crazy for. And I've had it a couple times before, but not in a while. Oh, that's a really big aroma. It's got the, a lot of the dank, resinous qualities of your West Coast IPA aromas. But then lots and lots of really ripe fruit. I smell really ripe mango and some kind of Smarties aromas. Sweet candy sort of things going on. Frosting almost like that. And little orangey grapefruit. Pineapple, all that stuff's happening. You, even though it doesn't look like your modern New England juice bomb IPA, and the head is sticking on really well, Two Roads knows how to make a fantastic looking beer and a, a really good head that's just pillowy and sticking around really well, even though the, the carbonation is pretty like light to medium. But even with that lower carbonation, there's lots of aroma and I'm not getting, I'm noticing much malt, but this is actually, you know, a little bit darker than a lot of, uh, a lot of New England IPAs. I'm not sure what, what they use. It doesn't seem like there's any, uh, crystal malt or anything like quite as intense as that in here, but maybe honey-ish malt or something. I don't know if they use any wheat. They don't tell you much on the can at all. Just juicy tropical fruit, bright floor, floor aromas. They don't mention anything about the malt. Um, but there's definitely got to be some citric going on in here. I don't know what else is, is in there. I'm, I'm, I assume there are other ones, but it's really citra forward, definitely. And I like, I like the aroma. It doesn't actually smell like I'm about to drink fruit juice, exactly. But it smells, it smells great. It smells super duper clean. I'm not getting any overwhelming, like yeasty stone fruit or malty things going on or anything that's quite biscuity or buttery. It seems like they're using a pretty clean yeast drain still, but it's helping to cut, let just let out the, the really fruity hop character. And it's, there's a little bit of a smoky, dank, not quite garlicky onion sort of thing, but it's it's got that that that, that dankness going on. And the first sip, yeah, and it, it has a nice bitter bite to it. It's not quite as fruity in the flavor. I'm like noticing some sort of toasty Honey Nut Cheerios malt also in there. But it's not, yeah, it's a lot drier. I'm getting a little bit of heat from the 8% alcohol there, but the aroma is much fruitier, I would say. Yeah, it's much more of a crisp, clean taste and with a nice bitter bite at the end. Um, yeah, I would say the feel and the taste and the and the finish is much more of a slightly old-fashioned IPA. Um, yeah, quite a bit of bitterness in this one. 
Um, definitely not not like a treehouse or a trillium, but with the intense fruity aroma, it's like New England IPAs for sure, or like modern New England IPAs. I feel like this one is is kind of not as old as Hetty Topper, um, but Lawson's has been doing doing their their special IPAs for quite a while now. I'm not sure if Double Sunshine originally came out in 2011. That's when it was first checked and untapped. This one has only been around since like 2014, I think. And then it's a really clean, clean spicy. Yeah, it's very, very spicy, I would say. The spiciness and the flavor beats out the fruitiness, and it's not lingering on my palate like uh, like I just drank some pineapple juice or something. It's more like um, like I had some black pepper and I, I have so, some grapefruit rinds in my mouth or something like that. Yeah, it's almost yeah. The bitterness is building up like a West Coast beer actually with it with the spiciness and that and the resiny character coating my tongue a little bit. It's mainly the aroma. I think that's why a lot of people are love this beer. I think it's really great it's because it's it's not odd in the feel and the flavor and the look um, to people who like more traditional IPAs, but it's way fruitier. The aroma is really big and has so so many juicy tropical aromas. But then it's not like when you drink it, it's not like oh this is just like I'm drinking drinking actual juice, which some people don't like that about about the uh, the New England IPAs. This one kind of crosses over pretty well. But that bite is a little, just a little bit much for me. Um, it's not the sort of thing where I can drink the whole can. It really dries out my mouth and my tongue right now. I'm definitely gonna share some of this one. But it's it's done really well. There's no flaws in it. There's nothing wrong with it. It just has a little bit more of a of a spi of a big spicy bitterness than my favorite and the more modern uh, New England IPA style. Um, I give it pretty good score. I'm good. I'm not. I'm not super crazy about it. Honestly, it's it's very 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 well made. There's it's just a little bit different style. Maybe I'd do a 82 or something for this one. 80 maybe 85. Uh, but you know, it's not about the uh, it's not about the ratings. It's it's about just experiencing the beer together. So please don't get mad at me. Um, because I'm not giving your favorite IPAs a 97.6 because I don't really care about that as much. It's more about sharing our, our, our tastes and all that stuff. So yes, very good. It's worth getting. Um, you might be gouged for prices. I, I know that this, some stores are selling these beers for as much as Trillium, but actually in the Boston area, it's harder to get this then than Trillium because it's only been distributed twice ever. Um, in Boston, but I think it'll happen more often. Hopefully I can get some cans on Super Fresh, uh, Super Session number two, the other can that, that has gotten around here, because I think I like that one maybe a little more, because um, it's, it's obviously a Session beer. It's not quite as big and bitter as this one. But the aroma on this is just fantastic. So the aroma alone on this is worth it. So 